good evening everyone i am varshni st and today we shall be discussing about fungi fungi are the eukaryotes and heterotrophs which can't produce their own food and they have the absorptive mode of nutrition which will produce the enzymes to convert the complex substrates into soluble substrates and they'll reproduce by spores we call the fungal body as thallus and each fungal body is made up of fragments or the filament called as hyphae and fusion of hyphae or mat of hyphae we call it as mycelium coming to its reproduction in the asexual reproduction we have fragmentation so as you can observe in the picture the fungal hyphae will be divided into different fragments and each fragment behaves as a new individual whereas in case of budding the parent mother cell will produce the outgrowth or the protrombins and the nuclear division takes place from where the nucleus will move from parental cell to the daughter cell and that bud or the protrombins will get separated from the fungal parent and behaves as a new individual coming to the fission which is a transverse division of cell as you can observe in the picture the vacuole and the nucleus will transversely divide by the septum formation and daughter cell will be formed and against the adverse climatic conditions fungi produces chlamydospores chlamydospores are thick hard resistant spores so they may be present at the end region or terminal region we call it as terminal chlamydospore whereas some spores are produced at the middle of the hyphae we call them as intercalary chlamydospores coming to the orthospores these are the spores which are produced from hyphae in the basi petal succession basi petal means it's from the apex towards the hyphae whereas sporangiospores are the spores produced internally within the sac like structure called as sporangium and you might have heard about the conidia which are produced by the fungi which are produced externally on the conidiophore either at the tip or side of the hyphae so imagine that this is a conidiophore the conidia will be produced at tip or side of the hyphae moving on in case of sexual reproduction the fungal sex cells are called as gametes whereas the sex organs are called as gametangia for example male gametangia anthridium female gametangia oogonium or ascogonium if these gametangia are similar in size it is isogamy the name itself says iso means same whereas if they are dissimilar in size it is an isogamy coming to the important sexual reproduction types it is planogametic copulation see in this picture you can see the isogamy and an isogamy plano means movement so here there will be fusion of motile gametes either the male or the female will be moving and the fusion takes place sometimes the male will be motile and the female will not be motile so that we call it as a heterogamy whereas gametangial contact means the antheridia and the oogonia will fuse with the help of a fertilization tube so this is the fertilization tube which helps the movement of male nuclei from antheridium to oogonium this is gametangial contact whereas gametangial copulation means here there will be no fertilization tube instead there will be fusion of male and female gametangia in case of spermatization the spermatia or the male will fuse with the receptive hyphae or the female so the fusion of spermatia and receptive hyphae is spermatization what is somatogamy somatic means compatible vegetative cell 
so if there is a fusion between compatible somatic hyphae then we call it as a somatogamy coming to the heterokaryosis hetero means different karyo means nuclear so this concept was given by hansen and smith in botrytis cinerea in 1932 as you can observe in the picture there is two different type of nuclei for example the pink and blue which indicates that there is two different nuclei or genetically different nuclei in the same thallus so presence of different nuclei in the same thallus is called as hetero karyosis parasexuality means this was given by pantakarvo and roper in aspergillus nidulens in 1952 here there will be fusion between heterokaryotic hyphae so there will be fusion between heterokaryotic hyphae which is followed by mitotic crossing over so that you will get the diploids here and the diploids will get converted into haploids by the process of haploidization so this parasexuality can also bring the recombination in fungi mitotic crossing over is the important point here so in case of fungal thallus there is two types homothallism and heterothallism homo means same in the same thallus itself you find the male and female whereas hetero means in the different thallus male and female will be present sorry for the inconvenience i had lost my internet connection yeah was saying is explaining about chytridio mycota so this chytridio mycota has cenocytic thallus cenocytic means without septations so either the fungi may have septate hyphae or aseptate hyphae we call the aseptate hyphae as cenocytic hyphae and the sexual reproduction is by zoospore which has a whiplash flagella whiplash means this is a whiplash flagella there is another type of flagella called as tinsel flagella which has hairs like this so in case of chytridio mycota we have the single posterior whiplash flagella in case of zoo spores and the sexual reproduction is by planogametic copulation so in this the important order is chytridiales you might have heard about the wart of potato which is caused by syncytium endobioticum so it is endobiotic in nature that means it produces the zoo spores within the host cell it will produce the zoo spores so we call it as a endobiotic and uh, these zoo spores will act as a parasite for the host and spicelomycetes so this has the whole thallus which acts as a reproductive structure we call it as holocarpic some fungi will be eucarpic eucarpic means part of the thallus acts as a reproductive structure but in case of spicelomycetes it is whole fungi acts as a reproductive structure and the very good example is alpidium brassicae which is the vector for important viral diseases like lettuce bigwain virus and uh, tobacco necrosis virus next let us move on to the zygomycota this is also having the hyphae without any septations we call it as cenocytic hyphae and the mycelium will be branch coming to the asexual reproduction it produces the sporangiospores within a sac like structure called as sporangium and this is the sporangiophore in which the sporangiospores will be produced in case of sexual reproduction it produces the gametangial contact and zygospores will be produced here and the important order is mucarids so these mucarids are also called as pinworms because 
they appear like a needle or a black dot like structure on the hyphae and that's why we call them as pin mole whereas sugar fungi means these fungi will utilize the simple carbohydrates that's why we call them as sugar fungi it was blacksley in the year 1904 told that mucor is heterothallic in nature that means male and female gametangia are present in different thallus and you might have heard about the famous indonesian dish tempeh which is made up of soy bean and rice upas which tells that rice upas can be used in fermentation process compared to mucor mucor has only one kind of hyphae whereas rice upas has two kinds of hyphae you are seeing here rhizoids means root like hyphae whereas stolon means aerial hyphae this is the rhizoid and this joining region or the aerial hyphae is this so this is the aerial hyphae on which the conidiophore and conidia will be produced and next is pilobolus it is also called as hat thrower or shotgun fungus because of its virulent spore discharge it will discharge the spores very fastly so we call it as hat thrower and next order is entomophthirales as the name itself indicates it is a parasite of insect and uh, all the zygomycetes has uh, aseptate hyphae and uh, asexual spore is uh, zygospore but here in case of this there will be septate hyphae and asexual spore will be conidia coming to next kingdom straminipila here you will find the pthium phytophthora so under umycota the important characters are it has both whiplash and tinsel flagella this is the whiplash and this is the tinsel flagella and here in case of asexual reproduction you can find this biflagellate spore that means it has both whiplash and tinsel flagella and sexual reproduction is by gametangial contact the important order umycetes has saproligenes so saproligenes are also called as water molds and it has two features that is dimorphism and sporangial proliferation dimorphism means it has both primary and secondary zoospores whereas sporangial proliferation means imagine that this is the zoosporangia and uh, these are the zoospores it has both whiplash and tinsel flagella so once these zoospores are released the old zoosporangia will produce the new zoosporangia having all the zoospores in it so this type of proliferation is called as sporangial proliferation we see it in case of saproligenes coming to the pthiales we have pthium here which will cause the damping of and root rots for example pthium afanidermatum causes damping of in case of tobacco this pthium will enter into the host with the help of inter and intracellular hyphae and it has vesicle which is absent in phytophthora this phytophthora as you can observe in the picture it has a lemon shaped sporangia and hostoria is the nutrition absorbing organ now it's time for the discussion let me know the answer please okay the answer is b syncytrium it produces posterior whiplash flagella b so the answer will be b and with two anterior unequal whiplash flagella is plasmodiophora and uh, with two flagella one anterior and one posterior just now i told it's phytophthora without any flagella is magnophore coming to perennosporae so this mainly causes the downy mildew perennosporaceae causes downy mildew for example pernos zerospora sorghi causes downy mildew in sorghum and uh, albuginaceae this causes the white blisters as you can observe in the picture here what's the difference between albuginaceae and pernosporaceae 
in case of albuginaceae there will be chains of sporangia whereas in case of pernosporaceae there will be single or cluster and here it is unbranched sporangiophore here it is branched sporangiophore and next moving on to the ascomycota here it will be having the septations in its mycelium it doesn't have any of the flagella and it has the unique ability to produce the fruiting bodies and it produces the ascus within which ascospores will be produced and asexual reproduction is by budding fission fragmentation and thick hard chlamydospores and conidia it will produce the flask shaped fruiting body called as pycnidia within which you can find the conidia if it is saucer shaped then it is acervulus so that within the host epidermis you find the fungal stroma here and these are the conidio four on which you can find the conidia and next fruiting body is fused conidia it is cinema if it is loosely arranged it is coramium if it is a cushion shape and you can observe the conidio four and conidia then it is sporodochium coming to sexual reproduction in case of ascomycetes it is gametangial contact with the help of fertilization too spermatization means spermatia with receptive hyphae somatogamy means fusion of vegetative or compatible somatic hyphae so how does this ascus will be produced imagine that this is the anteria and ovum i'll be drawing now this is anteria and this is ovum in case of gametangial contact we find the fertilization tube this is called as trichogyne so through the trichogyne the male nuclei will reach the female or the ascogonium and fertilization takes place and we get the dikaryotic nuclei so this is the ascogonium ascogonium will produce the protruded structure called as acegenous hyphae this is the acegenous hyphae so this hyphae will be having uninucleate tip cell and rest is binucleate one of the binucleate cell will bend and form the crook cell as there will be crook cell formation there will be nuclear division which leads for the formation of two nuclei and this will undergo meiosis for the production of four nuclei and this four nuclei undergo mitosis to produce eight nuclei so this is how eight nuclei will be produced within the ascus then the protoplasm will cover it and eight ascospores are produced within the ascus this is how the ascus will be produced there may be unit unicate ascus or bite unicate unit unicate means as you can observe in the picture there is only one wall but here you are observing two wall that's why we call it as a bite unicate outer wall and inner wall ascocarp means the protective coat which is made up of uh, parenchymatous tissue along with the a side we call it as a ascocarp if it is a closed ascocarp we call it as a clistothecia and if it is a flask shaped ascocarp we call it as a perithecia and if it is a cup shaped then it is apothecia 
you know the contribution of yeast in the bakery bread industry and in the fermentation so fermentation of yeast was given by louis pasteur but there was another scientist called buchner who told that even the cell free extract of yeast can also do the fermentation so this was given by buchner who told that the zymase enzyme can also be used for the fermentation coming to the erysiphase they mainly cause the powdery mildew we know that erysiphae graminis causes wheat powdery mildew whereas unsinular nicator causes grapes powdery mildew and the great laboratory wheat which we call it as aspergillus comes under the urochiales under ascomycetes so here coming to its structure it will be having one food cell this will be the food cell on which we can find the conidiophore then there will be supporting cells like this so these supporting cells will lead to the phyllade membrane this phyllade membrane will produce the conidia food cell and phyllade will be absent in case of penicillium and uh, we know that penicillium will be used in the production of antibiotics such as uh, griseofulbin which comes from the penicillium griseofulbum which is used against the diseases of skin nail and hairs so this comes under urochiales morcellas are the spongy mushrooms so these spongy mushrooms as you can observe in the picture this region is the stalk or the stipe and this region is the phyllus so they mainly grow in uh, manure and humus rich soils whereas chitomium comes for the disease of soft rot of wood come to the basidiomycota so this will actually produce the basidium or the club shaped structure which produces the basidiospore so imagine that this is the basidium this basidium may be hollow or fragmo hollow means it doesn't have any septations whereas fragmo means it has the septations i'll be explaining dicaryophase in rust what is mm -hmm. clamp connection and dolipor septa in case of basidio mycota clamp connection means it is a hook like structure imagine that this is the fungal hyphae this is a and this is b these are the two nuclei so to maintain the dicaryotic condition there is a formation of hook like structure we call it as a clamp connection once the clamp connection is formed there will be nuclear division a produces a1 and b produces b1 and this is the clamp connection the a1 will move into the clamp connection here it will be a the b reaches here and there will be b1 then from the clamp connection the a1 will reach here and the b1 will be here once the a1 reaches here there will be septum formation here that's how we find the dicaryotic mycelium here to maintain the dicaryotic condition there is a formation of clamp connection or the hook like structure in case of basidio mycetes what is dolipore septa to avoid the migration of nuclei from one cell to another there will be septum formation like this this is called as dolipore septa to avoid the migration of nuclei in case of basidiomycetes we can find the asexual reproduction in uh, budding fragmentation or chlamydospores and conidia you also find oidia oidia means uh, it is a primary mycelium will divide into different cells called as oidia in case of sexual reproduction there will be a basidium like this where the plasmogamy takes place and the karyogamy takes place later followed by meiosis 
So the meiosis takes place and four nuclei will be produced. Then the basidium will start producing the pointed structure called as sterigmata and these nuclei will move into the sterigmata. So on the sterigmata, there will be production of four basidio spores. So this is how basidio spores are produced by basidium. Coming to the important orders, the rust which comes under uridines. This rust and smut fungi will lack the clamp connection and dolly pore septa. As here, we can find the dicaryotic condition through different ways. So there is no need of clamp connection at dolly pore septa. An important genus is Puxenia. This is an obligate parasite which requires some living host for its survival. And this is very much specific for a particular host. For example, Puxenia graminis criticide will infect only wheat, whereas Avene infects oat. Hordy infects barley. Secalis infects rye. There are mainly three important rusts of wheat. Black stem rust, which is caused by Puxenia graminis reticide. Orange or brownish pustules is caused by Puxenia graminis recondita. Yellow rust by Puxenia graminis striforms. Coming to the black stem rust, this is a Heterosseous rust means it requires two different hosts. Wheat is the primary host and barberry is the secondary host. Now let's see how actually this life cycle will be there. This is the uridial pustule or uridospore you find on the wheat leaves. These uridospores will get converted into teleospores at the later stages. And this teleospores on germination will produce the promycelium. This is the promycelium. Upon meiosis, there will be four nuclei. And upon the promycelium, you can find four basidio spores on steric matter. See, this is the basidio spores, which will reach the barbary. Once they reach the barbary, they'll produce the monokaryotic mycelium. And this monokaryotic mycelium will become primary mycelium. And there will be production of pycnea. This is the pycnea. Flask-shaped pycnea will be produced. Here you can find the spermatia and receptive hyphae. Spermatia is the male sex organ and receptive hyphae is the female sex organ. Please remember that. Is there any doubts? Is there any doubts? Spermatia of one pycnea cannot fuse with the receptive hyphae of same pycnea. So, spermatia of one pycnea fuses with the receptive hyphae of another pycnea to produce the dicaryotic mycelium. And this dicaryotic mycelium will be produced here, whereas some of the hyphae will reach the lower surface of the barbary and produce the proasium. And when this proasium is dicaryotized, it becomes the asium. And this asium will start producing the asiospores. So these asiospores will produce the uridium upon which you can find the uridiospores. And again, these uridospores will go and infect the wheat leaves and the cycle continues. The unidirectional movement of urodospores from Himalayan foothills to Nilgiri and Palni hills is 
Paxenia path, which was given by K.C. Mehta. Have you ever thought why it is this disease is particularly less in case of Himalayan fruit hills when compared to Nilgiri and Palli hills? It's because that when the urodospores reach the fruit hills, it is already March and uh, the crop will be at the harvesting stage. So there will be less time for the infection. But in case of Nilgiri and Palli, the crop is only two and a half month old and that's why there is a more time for the infection and that's why there is more disease in case of Nilgiri and Palli hills. I told that Paxenia graminis triticel only infects the wheat. So this host specificity or we say the pharma specialist concept was given by Erickson. Whereas the races which are physiologically same but different in case of infection, we call it as physiological specialization which was given by Stockman and Levine. Coming to the smut fungi which comes under eustilaginase. Here also there is no dolipur septa and clamp connection. The smut of Barbary is caused by Eustilago nuda. And in case of wheat, it is triticide. Whereas in case of maize, it is maize. Only in case of maize smut, there will be tumor production and uh, you can also find the inflorescence or the ovary is actually the entry of telio. So this is a systemic disease. The telio sporosuri will be formed in the inflorescence. And you might have heard about the sugarcane smut. Here there will be a whip-like structure. So we call it as a whip smut there. Coming to the mushroom fungi. They look like a fungus flowers, therefore we call it as a fungus flower or the gill fungi. Coming to its important structures, this is the stipe and this is the pilus. Whereas these things are the these are the gills you can see here, and this is the annulus region. Here there will be vulva. This is the poisonous mushroom, Amanita. We call the Amanita phylloides as a death cap. Whereas Amanita muscaria is against the flies, so we call it as a fly agar. Prina is a false death cap. And Rubicens is a blush. So these are the poisonous mushrooms which comes under Basidiomyces. Coming to another, that is Polyphorus, which is a good rotting fungi. The last kingdom is Deuteromycota. This is also called as fungi imperfecti because it doesn't have any of the sexual reproduction. It has only asexual reproduction. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, you just mute the one student. One is one student is unmuted. It is creating some disturbance. Yeah, it's muted now. Okay. Fine. Okay. Yeah, he's muted now. Okay. okay. Continue. Okay. Yeah. In case of deuteromycota, we call it as a fungi imperfecti because it doesn't have any of the sexual reproduction. It has only asexual reproduction. That's why we call it as a anamorphic fungi. How the asexual reproduction takes place? It's because of a saucer-shaped structure, asarvuli, and pycnidia. It is a flask-shaped pycnidia. The important genuses are alternaria. You might have heard the obclavate conidia, which is the characteristic feature here. See, as you can observe in the picture, imagine that this is the conidia. It has both transverse and longitudinal septa. So this type of conidia is called as obclavate conidia. This is a very characteristic feature of alternaria. This is also called as nudiform conidia. And this can cause the disease early blight of potato caused by alternaria solani. Coming to coletotrichum, which will cause the anthracnose disease. This has the fruiting body, acervulus. 
this is a saucer shaped fruiting body and you find the conidiophore on which there will be sickle shaped conidia and you also find these cities here this is about collatotrichum whereas fusarium it will cause the root rots and wilting symptoms this actually produces three types of conidia macro micro and chlamydo spores coming to helminthosporium so this we know that it will cause the brown leaf spot of rice it also causes victoria blight of oats whereas pestilopsis this causes gray blight of pea that is pestilosia ca or it also causes the scab in case of gava seed spore will be like this there will be cites like this this is the dark cell and hyaline cell this is the dark cell and this is the lower hyaline cell dark cell and this is the hyaline cell this is the upper hyaline cell this is how you find the cites here this is the pestilosiopsis whereas pyricularia it has a pyriform conidia means kidney shaped conidia and this causes the blast of rice so these all things comes under the deuteromycetes where you cannot find the sexual reproduction but you find the asexual reproduction so this is about the today's class today if you have any doubts please let me clarify